What's up guys, Cloud7470 here bringing you a video because I'm doing that again now. So, Toronto is this weekend and that boycott thing just, I guess it just ended. Fuck it, people are going. Everybody's going to Toronto now if they can. I can't because, you know, I actually agree with that whole boycott thing of not giving me enough time to get a passport because I can't afford a $200 one. $40 one, I could have afforded. And like, a $200 trip, I could have afforded. Not a $200 plus dollar passport. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting to see how many people actually show up. I'm predicting it'll be a very small YCS still. Like, no more than a thousand players at the most, if that. Because... Sure, the big names and people that can afford to go are going to go, but the random people that just enjoy this game and then want to play in this new format so super bad, like, oh, I wanted to go so bad, but I can't now, so, oh well. Uh, have fun if you're going, but whatever. So, let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about uh, what this video is really about, and that is predictions and how I think the meta is going to play out. It's so hard. It's really hard to predict the meta at the start of a new format. It really is, especially when a format like this, when anything can happen, literally anything can happen. We saw last September in Toronto, September 1st, Jeff Jones got second place with Grand Soil Psychics. Now, windups were the best deck of that format. We all know that, and we all knew that was coming. We all knew they were going to be the most popular deck because... You know, somebody finds a combo posted on Pojo or Duelist Grounds, and it's everywhere. It's all over YouTube, and everybody knows it. Everybody bought windups fast, including myself. I played them that format. And <coughs> so, but there was that second place, Jeff Jones, Grand Soil Psychics, came out of nowhere. Literally anything can happen. And that's what's going to happen again, this YCS. So, it's really hard to predict the meta. Decks that I think are going to be prevalent and going to be uh, in the top tables and at least uh, played in the most of numbers, you're going to have a lot of Black Wings. Black Wings have Whirlwind at 3 now, and with 3 Kalu, it's, it's a very solid deck. It's a very good choice. It's a very good pick. Uh, plus, they have Delta Crow, Anti Reverse, which is Heavy Storm for Black Wings, and they have Icarus Attack, which is one of the, is definitely the best two for two removal in the game. Um, one of my favorite cards of all time. Icarus Attack is so busted. So, Black Wings have a very good chance of topping. They'll definitely top, I imagine. They'll at least get top 32. And they will um, most likely be one of the most played decks because it's very cheap. Uh, I have a whole Black Wing deck done, it's all common. Uh, I don't think I paid a cent for it. I think I just had my friends give me cards. And the whole deck is done now, and it's really, really good. Outside of the extra deck, of course, but that's all staples. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I still have this stupid cough. Number two deck that's probably going to be most played is um, Prophecies. Prophecies are... They, they lost their Judgment Day. So what? <laughs> they, they lost... Judgment Day. They were still really good before. They still topped a lot. Uh, Fraser Smith topped. Was it San Diego? I think it was. It topped back in April uh, before Judgment Day even came out. And so, no, no, it was Jersey. It was in May because uh, yeah, I was supposed to go there, but it didn't. So whatever. But um, prophecies definitely will be up there probably be number two most played deck because if people couldn't sell it after their judgment day they figured well i might as well just play it i have it still um and priestess is a good card priestess is a really good card outside of a uh the evil swarm matchup um priestess just says no to a lot of things like it's like okay i summon it super easy summoning condition because i'm always going to have three spell books in my hand and then I'm going to pop something, as long as I have something in the grave. It's, Priestess is a really good card, and I definitely see it uh, seeing play again. Plus, World of Prophecy, another really good card for that deck. Very underrated. People not really uh, considering that card as they... Well, they should be, because that's a very, very good card. Um, 
Once again, super su easy summoning condition. Reveal four spell books. I'm gonna have spell books a lot, and then I'm going to special summon this card and blow up your field and my field except for this card. Do you guys remember when Judgment Dragon was at one because it was so fucking broken? This is that. This is Judgment Dragon, and Judgment Dragon is at three now. Yes, but. Prophecies are a lot more consistent than Light Sworns, so I've definitely considered World, considered World of Prophecy a, a card you should fear and be ready for it. <coughs> now, other decks, other decks that are going to be there, uh, most prevalent and uh, definitely do well. Evil Swarms, Evil Swarms are they're anti-meta. They're the best anti-meta deck there is now. Since macro, since Dino Rabbit, Macro Rabbit cannot be cannot physically be a deck anymore. Um, your next best bet is Evil Swarms with Ophion to uh, shut down the dragons because plants are still a good thing. We'll get into those next. Um, shut down dragons. Shut down priestess. Um, lock out agents. Lock out. Uh, Chaos Dragons, uh, stop Black Wings from Synchro Summoning, uh, you know, Ophion says no to a lot, plus, um, Key Beetle, Safe Zone, Emptiness, GG, like, they, like, there's nothing they can do, so, um, Evil Swarm's definitely gonna be good, and on the contrary, Constellars will be definitely very good, Constellars are considered better than Evil Swarm's now, um, Constellars are very, very good, they were just a little too slow for last format, but everything was. So, um, Constellar's definitely going to be a, a, a deck to recommend, or to uh, take into consideration. Whether you're playing or um, when building your deck to uh, face, because Constellar's are going to be there. Oh, what else? See, anything can happen. Um, every old deck can come back. Um... I just said Black Wings at the most because of people's, like, nostalgia and really want to play that deck again. And with it being decent, it's like, why not? Yeah, Black Wings. Black I remember playing Black Wings back in, what was it, 10? 9? 10? Um, Black Wings were the shit. Black Wings will always be the shit. Um, if you don't like Black Wings, then what's wrong with you? Black Wings were, like, the start of this game becoming great and then going to shit, and now they're back, so it's becoming good again. Um, Black Wings. But, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Any old deck basically can come back if it's not destroyed by the ban list. So, Windups. They were pretty destroyed for their dirt, but they're still a deck. Insectors. Are really good. Agents. Really, really good. TG Stun. Oh, my God. Everybody's flipping tits for TG Stun. No Heavy Storm. And you have two striker now. Yeah, TG Stun is going to be very prevalent. I think TG Stun will be fucking in the top tables for sure. Uh, machines, some form of machines, Karkuri, gadgets, uh, Girgia, all three combined. And then definitely, by far, without a doubt, somebody is going to top with synchrocentric plants in the form of Dragon Ruler plants because that deck is so good. Outside of the Evil Swarm match with Ophion, it is basically the dragons we have now. It's not nearly as stupid, because what really made that deck stupid was the babies and the super rejuve, but you just replaced the babies with the plant engine, and now you have a synchro, like a synchro based dragon deck. Not so much just go for a Drago Sack Pass, it's now make Star Eater, or that's cool. Um, Make Black Rose blow up your 5 set, because you do that, because Heavy's gone. It's cool. I have Black Rose. Uh, Stardust to protect yourself. Scrap to clear the field. Literally anything. Librarian, if you're facing another Synchro deck, to get some more draws. So basically, anything can top. And this Dragon Plant deck, I feel, is really, really good. Other people will disagree with me. That's fine. It's an opinion. My opinion, Dragon Plants are amazing. So... Like I used to do in these videos, and now it's been a long time because we really haven't had an event. Um, down here below me, on my table, I have side deck choices that I think are, in general, what you should be looking for, looking into, for using um, for this upcoming meta. 
and you if you have suggestions please leave them down below or mind you later so uh, I'm gonna cut the video here and just do another shot of these cards here alright guys so as you can see here we have several 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 cards to talk about for your side deck uh, for the September 1st format and going into YCS Toronto um, now I've broken them down into different categories like I always have as you can see here Woo! anyway <coughs> so um let's start just up here so with heavy storm gone we need just spell and trap removal and uh, the best card for that of course is space typhoon but space typhoon is probably in your main deck at two or three anyway so whatever now other cards we have here um, malevolent catastrophe this card definitely is good. It's a heavy storm for when your opponent attacks. Uh, decree, if you don't play traps, you have a uh, decree to stop. Eradicator, if you play darks, because it's always good. And then this card here is for uh, dragon decks. Uh, whether you're playing the incarnate dragons in your deck, or you're playing hieratics, or chaos dragons. This beat here of Charizard, because you can totally see that is Charizard. I don't care what they say. Uh, this card is really really good for dragon decks if you don't know what this card is let's read it real quick it's not gonna focus so uh, you return one face up level 5 or higher dragon type monster on your side of the field to the owner's hand and destroy all magic trap and cards on the field so the thing about this is it says return one face up level 5 or higher dragon type monster on your side of the field to the owner's hand so it won't work if you're playing against uh, dra a dragon deck. But, sorry, every time I pause it's because I'm getting text messages. Um, but if you're playing Hydratics or you're playing Chaos Dragons, this card is your heavy storm. It's really good. Um, I don't think it's good enough to side deck or to main deck just because of uh, you don't know what you're going to be playing against. And uh, a lot of rumors are going around that everybody's uh, main decking super, 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 super duper spell and trap removal. And so in response to that, nobody's playing traps. So side deck, good place for that. Um, another card to consider that I couldn't find copies of. Dust Tornado, Night Beam. Um, those two cards, generally very good for spell and trap removal. Uh, next, Graveyard Control and uh, Banish remo banish Control. Soul Drain. Sorry, texting. Uh, Soul Drain. Still very good. Shuts down uh, Mermails because Mermails is going to be very prevalent as well. Uh, I couldn't think of everything at the top of my head. Now looking at all these cards, I should be able to hit every deck. But I will forget some. Um, Soul Drain. Very good for Mermails and Dark Worlds because Dark Worlds are a thing still. Macrocosmos, same reason, and DeFi, same reason though. All these are at one though, so uh, if you can't play macro because you're playing uh, um, an XYZ deck or something, if macro hurts you, then you can play these two, and if you can't play DeFi even, then uh, you're stuck with just Soul Drain. But, um, and then Iron Wall for uh, you know, the opposite. Uh, if you are playing Water or you are playing Dark Worlds, you want this for sure. And uh, it's also good to stop the dragon rulers if you see them uh, dropping lots of dragons. Um, next, monster removal. Basic monster removal. Kaiku uh, for grave and not allowing to uh, banish. Very good. Mostly grave control, but um, allows you to get rid of monsters from their graveyard. Very helpful. Uh, Fossil Dyna stops special summoning, and you can flip it to do all that jazz and stop special summoning. Grand Mole, because Grand Mole. Uh, bounce XYZ, Synchros, all that jazz. Snowman Eater, very good. Flip, destroy. Same with Raikou, but Raikou, you've got that mill, you know, so. Um, and then I can really see this card coming back to play. We didn't see this card, like, since wind-up format, and I'm really excited to see this start getting some play again. Spirit Reaper, just to get some stalls going. And then this card here. This card just came out in Judgment of the Light, and if you don't know what this does, um, 
Basically, destroy Ophion. When this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, destroy that target. If you do, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. So, it's it's got 1700 attack to you, so you can be over stuff with it. Um, it's uh, a little better than Snowman Eater because it can, uh, uh, for one, beat over stuff, and two, it inflicts burn damage. So I really like this card. Fencing Fire Fairy is what it's called. It's out of Judgment of the Light. Very good. Um, next, just general spells and traps that are always good. Gozen and Rivalry, if you uh, can play them. Uh, very good right now. Soul Taker, still a very good one for one monster removal. Deck Dev, if you can play it, super good against uh, Mermails because they're playing Undyne. And uh, it's good against Insectors. It's good against uh, Black Wings, kind of. I don't know. I don't know if I would side it in against Black Wings or not. Uh, it's, it hits Blizzard, it hits Gale, it hits Kalut, but it keeps the three big ones so i don't know um i might side one in and then mind crush for furry furry fist because i forgot all about them until right now furry fist is still a deck even i'm spilling the camera everywhere even with one spirit there's four axis furry fist is still a super good deck and wolf bark is like 60 dollars right now and it's retarded so i sold my furry fist thank god but mind crush Minecraft very 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 good against the furry fist and other stuff in general um anything that searches and then on to hand traps do, 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 do. electric virus for dragons machines all that jazz uh general valor maxi because they're good if you're not maining them you should be siding them by far gemini imps for dark worlds because dark worlds are a thing droll and lockbird for prophecies and uh burn slash trolley decks and then dd crow this card definitely coming back this card definitely deserves to see some play again one plants two furry fist not that much for furry fist anymore but yes still for furry but furry fist because wolf bark but this card definitely seeing some play also for fire kings because i just remembered that deck too fire kings are good this will stop garunix definitely definitely dd crow consider it it's very good and I think that is all I got to say. Um, so I'm going to cut the video back to my face and then conclude this video. All right. So Toronto is going to be a very, very, very interesting tournament. And it sucks because it's a holiday on Monday. So I have to work. Saturday and Sunday and cannot even enjoy the event coverage if there is any by event coverage I mean Facebook and Twitter and YouTube because Konami is not going to provide event coverage if they do because they've surprised us once already this year if they do I will be very sad that I missed it and hope that they continue to do it but it will be uh a very interesting tournament indeed so what do I think is going to win literally could be anything dragons dragon plants prophecies gear gear fucking insectors water fire fire fist agents fucking chaos dragons what else did I say? I said a lot of things earlier. Constellars, Evil Swarms, Black Wings for sure. You know what it's going to win? Infernities. Didn't mention them the whole video, because I know it's going to win. It's going to shock the world, but it really shouldn't. Infernities is the most broken deck this format by far. For two reasons. Stupid derp explosiveness that can now be good enough with this format, and no fucking heavy storm. TG Stun is awesome without a heavy storm floating around, but Infernities, you can stop all their plays, and it doesn't matter. 
The only thing that makes that deck bad is low consistency. If some player, and I'm sure someone already has, and it's going to be that person, if some player can find the most consistent build of Infernities, they will win Toronto. Calling it. That's my prediction. Infernities will win. That deck is stupid good. Just... For one, Lavovel Chain is a card that makes that deck stupid broken. Infernity Barrier is one of the best trap cards in the game, and now there's no Heavy Storm. Infernity Break is another amazing trap card in the game. <coughs> the ability to have so much synergy with Street, pa street Patrol and Levier, that whole stupid loop is just going to lock you out. When an Infernity player has a board of Lavovel Chain, two Arch Fiends, and a Levier, along with four back row, you lose. Like, you, like, there's no way to come back from that unless you can just sheer overpower them and have every, literally every answer to their out, which is very unlikely. Like, the, the ability of that deck to just explode out of nowhere, and it will explode out of nowhere, is amazing. The only problem, though, is it is pretty inconsistent. It's a little hard to uh, get a consistent build. If you can get a consistent build, then you then that deck will win. Um, which, it's, it's not that inconsistent. It's just... Okay, it... If it's a thousand players, it'll probably be eleven around. Let's say it's a thousand players, eleven rounds of Swiss. At least, if you go into game three every round, which you won't if you're playing Infernities, you're probably gonna open bad. I'd say, in at least f four rounds probably. So 4 out of 11 rounds, you're going to open bad. And that's considering game 1, 2, and 3. You're going to open bad in 4 of those rounds. And opening bad in that deck is literally opening terrible. Like, you either open your awesome trap cards and a good monster which is the nuts, or you open all monsters and can't do anything. So, that's all I have to say. This video is pretty long. I don't know how long it is. Probably 20 minutes. And... That's all I gotta say. So thank you for watching. Sorry for the lack of enthusiasm. I, uh... I've had a very good day today. I fucking got my ear popped. That was fun. I pulled this motherfucker. It's a little late, yeah, but I got him now. I'm okay with it. I'm very happy about it. Uh, but it is like 11 o'clock at night after a full day of work and doctors and shopping. And I'm very tired and I should be sleeping, but I don't want to because I don't have to work till 4 tomorrow. So, gonna enjoy my night as much as I can because I'm losing my voice and I'm very tired. And... That is all I gotta say, other than please thumbs this video up if you like it. Thumbs it down if you don't, but if you don't like it, please describe why in the comments. Constructive criticism is appreciated and welcome here. But being an asshole is not. So, you know, take it as you will. And, uh, subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more videos. What's today? Monday? Saturday and Sunday is Toronto. I'll have a video in between of something, probably something random, and then uh, next Monday, or even Sunday night probably, I will have analysis of Toronto and what's going to happen for the rest of the format. Because you're the first tournament, you can always get a pretty good read on how people are going to start playing. Actually, it's more of the second tournament, but you can predict the second tournament from the first one. And that's now that's all I have to say. Because I don't have any tournaments until, like, October. So, until then, see you later, and thank you for watching.